Hi there, welcome to the Fierce Factor Podcast. I'm your host, Kaylee Lindholm. And I think it's time for us women to shift the conversation in business and step into our feminine leadership to do the most iconic work the aesthetic industry has ever seen. Each week, I'll be bringing a powerful dose of strategy, sarcasm, solutions, and sass that will rev up your creativity and ignite your brilliance as you link arms with me along our shared path of personal and professional growth in 20 minutes or less. Let's go. Welcome. So I have a super special treat for you today. If you didn't get a chance to see this training in the Facebook group, The Tribe of Fierce Aesthetic Leaders, you have to listen in on this one. This was not at all intended to be a sales pitch. I literally brought Dylan Kemna, my friend from Optical on as an expert in lead conversion, basically capturing and booking leads through the phone call. And I am so obsessed with what his company does <laughs> that I want you to listen to the end and actually go book a call conversion report with him. He brought on four secret shopper calls and we listened in on these and dissected each call. And I was blown away, let's say by the opportunity that there is to improve the process of engaging a patient over the phone. There were things like people answered the phone, not knowing the prices of their products or what the experience would be like for patients. There were people who did a great job on the phone, but then didn't actually take the patient's name and get them booked for the consultation and a lot of other nuances regarding phone etiquette, et cetera. So anyway, super interesting. You have to listen in and I would love to hear your feedback. If anyone has any feedback for me, send me a note on Instagram and tell me that you listened to this and what your thoughts were about it. I know we have phone scripts and we work with practices all the time. And I just think that By improving this process, this could literally add thousands of dollars to your bottom line. And one phone call could be worth so much in terms of a lifetime potential client. So without further ado, enjoy the episode. Well, hello, everybody. Hello, Facebook Tribe. Thank you, everybody, for joining today. It's been two weeks. I've been missing y'all. But I'm so glad to be here and to have a special guest for you, which you know is super, super rare. And I'm so excited to talk about a conversation that I honestly have never taught this topic live. It's something that I work on with literally every client. And so I am thankful to our guest, Dylan, for the inspiration to bring this into our June series of developing a seven-figure leadership mindset. And with that comes implementing strategies in your practice that are going to take your business to the next level. And a lot of things that have come up over the course of the past week, two weeks, three weeks, three months, really, as just time and the climate of our industry has changed and the businesses have evolved and now practices are getting back to work is messaging around how to really capture patients in that first phone call. And I brought on a very special guest today. It's Dylan Kemna from OptiCall. And I found out about this company. It was on a webinar, just kind of trying to keep up and learn about from a lot of the marketers in our space about what is kind of the plan of action from the marketing perspective, messaging, et cetera, as it relates to COVID and the pandemic, and also trends that they're seeing from practices in terms of how to market coming through this pandemic as well. And on that call was Optical and Dylan, who just really provided some amazing insight about what they're doing on the practice side to help walk practices through these kind of pitfalls, right? As it relates to closing the loop on that marketing and sales system, as I like to call it. It right because you can't just market and then not have conversion processes in place when a patient calls. There really is kind of an art or a finesse to not just credentialing the practice, telling the patient what they're about to expect, giving them a screenshot of the experience, but closing them over the phone or you know, getting them to actually book the consultation. So I have with me here with us today on this live presentation, Dylan from OptiCall, and he's worked 
He actually, Dylan, I'm, this is so cool. He worked for a marketing agency who worked as a partner with Optical. And he was so impressed by this company that he was like, okay, I want to work with you guys, right? Isn't that kind of the story? So Dylan joined the team 12 years ago, and he is also the founder of the Plastic Surgery Marketing Group on LinkedIn that has like some 10,000 plus members. He took me to school last week just a little bit on some LinkedIn marketing, which was really awesome. So I feel so honored to have a real consummate expert in not just the whole marketing system as it relates to working with aesthetic practices and medical practices really all together, but also also somebody who understands the nitty gritty and the nuances of what it takes to capture a patient when they call. Side note, his wife is also a practice manager. So this guy lives, eats, sleeps, breathes, and pillow talks, practice management and phone call conversion. So Dylan, welcome. So thank you for being here today. We're so excited to have you. Oh, I'm flattered. That was a fantastic introduction and I'm honored to be here as well. So thank you for having me, Kaylee. So I'm going to pull up my little Facebook here so peeps can ask us some questions if you have any as we're going through here. But I really kind of want to dive in and talk about one. Tell us a little bit about because when we think about answering the phones, I think like really that's one of those areas where you feel like, well, this is we're going to do a training and you're going to learn how to answer the phone. And maybe Susie is the one who's dedicated to answering the phone, but if she goes to lunch, then someone else will grab it and take a message or whatever. And it's kind of one of those things that I think everybody knows is super important, but Mm -hmm. it doesn't really necessarily get the attention, like the dedication and attention to detail and refinement that it deserves. Right. So absolutely right. Yeah. So So tell us, Tell us a little bit about what you and Optical in general, kind of how, what you guys do and how you help through that process. Absolutely. So just in your introduction, I thought of a couple of things that might be worth mentioning. We use a saying that you don't want to fumble the ball on the goal line. You're working hard to get these leads to come in. So most practices are spending a few hundred dollars just on their cost per lead. And then the revenue per patient can be several thousands of dollars where... Practices, I guess we'll think back to who runs the practices. You've got administrators and owners, and they're so busy dealing with compliance, patients, staff, personnel. A lot of times the calls and leads are kind of out of sight, out of mind. And that's all that OptiCall specializes in. So we've been doing it since 2002 and created systems to be able to deliver consistently. So as far as what happens at most practices, uh, before the call, we were talking about some of these sample calls that we have queued up. Would you like me to jump into that? Yeah, sure. So Dylan brought for us three, right? Three different scenarios. Or you have have four. I I just wasn't sure how much time we have. All right. So Dylan has four different call scenarios. And we thought before we actually go in and really educate and drop the education on you guys, we'll take you through these four calls. And I want to see, for those of you on Facebook in your comments, ranking which call was best and or if any of them were perfect. Is that good? Okay. That's good. Okay. So let's go call number one. And then maybe just we'll play the call and then just do a quick recap of what happened. Yep. Before we go into the next call. Okay. Yeah, sure. All right, here we go. So this first one, they're all Thank pretty you for calling. Short if you're a hospital or provider or calling to schedule an appointment, press one. Cosmetic or spa questions and appointments, press two. If you need to speak to a nurse, press three. Hi, you've reached Nikki with I am unable to come to the phone right now. So if you feel like So pretty straightforward. The reason I wanted to share that is we do these free lead conversion assessments where we're placing five phone calls and five lead forms to the websites to get a barometer of what that experience is like. And you'd be surprised at how many practices don't get to the phone calls. So that usually paints a pretty clear picture if overflow after hour support might be a good fit if bandwidth is an issue. And just an interesting stat about voicemails, like less than 27% of people will leave voicemails. Mm. And even if they do leave a voicemail, then you have to reconnect with them. So then you've got to track them down and you have to get them back when they're, you know, when they reach out, Google calls it a micro moment where they're emotionally compelled and they're right. ready. So hopefully you can get back in touch with them quick enough that they're still in that moment. You want me to jump to the next call? Or do yeah, you so let's, yeah, let's move through them and then we'll recap each of them. Yeah, and none of them are more than a minute long. So okay, we're just about a minute. So. Good morning. How do you feel? 
It's a little harder to hear, but yeah, you were able to get that. What'd you think of that call, Kaylee? So basically what happened was she called and just asked how much is Botox. And the person answering the phone said it's $13 a unit. And that was pretty much where, and that was that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True. So I thought that was pretty ineffective. It's, you'd be surprised at how many practices that's the process because the people at the practices kind of have a different perspective. They feel like they're medical professionals they're often super busy wearing multiple hats. So they might be checking right. patients in. They might, uh, who knows, they might be in billing and they're fielding new patient phone calls. So they feel like they're doing their job if, some, if they're answering somebody's questions. And that's why we like right. to do these assessments, just to get a barometer on what's happening. And the whole idea behind it, I use this theory, it's, I learned it at the marketing company I was at, in order to buy what John Smith buys, you have to see the world through John Smith's eyes. Yeah. So if you were the prospective patient and that's the experience you had, would you be inclined to move forward or not? And I guess there's other variables like reviews online and whether you're referred by a friend or family member. Right. But you might be inclined to call the next practice. And most of our mystery shops are around price because that's what most people are asking. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of an artificial question because right. people ask about price because they don't know how to distinguish one practice from another. Yes. So what we're trying to educate practices on is how to create that actual experience that's going to yes. help you stand out. And right. And I think back to buying behaviors, right? Your patients, they have a problem that they want solved. And so I think it goes back to understanding the patient a little bit better. What are your goals? What are you looking to achieve? Maybe they don't even know what Botox actually does. And in the end, they're a really great candidate for Sculptra. And that went from a $13 a unit for a little bit of Botox patient to a full non-surgical anti-aging rejuvenation package that is in the umpteen thousands, you know, mm -hmm. or it's a surgical patient potentially. So, you know, yep. I couldn't agree more. I think really honing in on what are you looking to accomplish and then guiding the patient from there. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's a great point, actually, because our focus is always in getting those callers to the next step, which is typically a consultation. Nowadays, you've got virtual consultations, but the idea is that you're going to have a better chance when you've actually scheduled some time to connect with them one-on-one, -on -one, uh, best case scenario, in person where they get a feel for your practice and your personalities and everything. So hopefully the takeaway that you get from this presentation is just some touch points on how to take control of that phone call and how to maximize these opportunities with the customer service mindset in general. So you want me to jump to the next call we have? Yeah. Okay. Thanks for coming. Cindy, how can I help you? Oh, hi. Um, I just have a quick question for you. I hear a sign on the road about cold sculpting. Can you give me more information about that? Of course. So our cold sculpting, we have all our patients come in and do a complimentary consultation with Angela, who does um, all our cold sculpting procedures. Uh, what area were you kind of looking for? Um, the abdominal area. Abdominal area? Okay. So the pricing, it varies greatly from patient to patient. So that's why we have you come in and have a chat with her, and then she'll go over your areas of concern, create a quote for you, a package, and go forward from there. Um, so, but yeah, typically with the abdomen, if you do lower and upper, it's going to be around the four to six thousand range for that. Um, so I'm more than happy to get you on her schedule to do a brain consultation if you would like. And there's no downtime with the actual procedure and of itself. Uh, you might feel a little numbness in that area, a little preoccupation, but it's nothing too invasive. You can go about your daily activities after the treatment. So, yeah. Oh, okay. No, that's what I wanted to know. I'm glad you gave me some pricing. So, thank you. Okay. I'm not ready to book a consult now, but whenever I'm ready, I'll definitely give you it. Oh, absolutely. Just give us the best. We'll get you on, okay? All right. Thank yeah. you. Bye-bye. Mm. So, what'd you think? So, well... I think the very friendly, confident mm -hmm. commands over really the procedure itself and the process that the patient would go through. But I guess I'll cheat because we already talked about this one, right? Uh -huh. But like she didn't capture the patient's information and it, or a timeline or, you know, anything that would help put her somewhere in the sales funnel. 
And so that was kind of like a missed opportunity in the end. Yeah. And that's, those are all great points. Like I'd listened to it a little closer where she did mention the consultation, but she didn't really ask for the appointment. And there's kind of a finesse to like, you can take an assumptive approach, but you kind of need a hard stop to let the caller make a decision on whether they're ready to move forward or not. Mm-hmm. So the idea is that you're building this experience by taking control of the phone call where relative to the other calls, I think she sounded much better. Well, one, we got voicemail. The other one mm-hmm. is just a basic answer. But the friendliness was there. The knowledge was there. That So I wouldn't not be inclined to move forward with that practice based on that experience. But from the practice perspective, what do they have to show for that call? Do they have a way right. of backing Well, and that, that's things? where, you know, that finesse really comes in because I know we've done secret shopper calls where, I mean, the sweetest, most knowledgeable, great, like all she really had to do was ask for the appointment. Mm-hmm. Like it's mm-hmm. almost not feeling salesy, but feeling like, look, we know we have something that's going to benefit you and help you solve your problem. And so we need to get you on our schedule, like Mm -hmm. and being confident to ask for that. Yeah. In our process, it always starts with the proper greeting, whatever they ask about it's I can definitely help you with that. I mean, you just want them to feel good. Like a lot of it's like how you make them feel more so than what you're saying. Right. We'll ask them, is this their first time contacting us? And that kind of sets the stage if it's a new opportunity to kind of ask for how they learned about the practice. But then we go in and ask them for a name and a number in case we get disconnected, which we know that we're doing that with an agenda. But if you can use their name in conversation, according to Dale Carnegie, somebody's name is their favorite word in the world. So you can use it tactfully. You can build rapport. And most people will appreciate that because... We've all been on an experience maybe with a cable internet provider where we've been on the phone for an hour and got disconnected and had to start all over again and we're losing our minds. So it's good customer service. You want to maximize these opportunities without going overboard. So the other mistake practices make, and it's not on one of our mystery shops, is they go into information capture mode. So somebody's just calling, asking about price. It's not tactful to start asking them for their date of birth and email address and if they're just yeah. trying to find out what you guys charge. Most of these, if they're following their standard EMR system, like they're looking at a screen that has these green open, they can't even right. advance to the next screen until oh. they put that in. So it's like, I need to get this data in here, you know, before yeah. I can. Like I used to always have my girls have a notepad just to kind of like jot down in case somebody jumps ahead and with information or has like a point of concern that you know you're going to need to capture on a screen you, you know, down. I'm sure you guys have a solution for that. But yep. I also will to that point, I had a client recently who reached out to me about his that he like was between went in to see a patient and came out of the room and that his patient care coordinator was still on the phone or his receptionist was still on the phone for like 20 minutes with somebody. And uh-huh. he was so worried about it. And he was like, I, what does she have to talk about for 20 minutes? If somebody has 20 minutes to spend to talk about this and why aren't they in my office, right? Or booking yeah. a virtual consultation with me. Yep, yep. And yeah. that, that's part of the finesse of being able to take control of the phone call. So I'm going to talk about what we call logical progression. Okay. So every call should have a proper introduction, exploration, education, and closing. And it can be challenging depending on who you're talking to. But another thing, I'm glad you brought that up. You're talking to a prospective patient, usually in the waiting room with other people around, and then you've got HIPAA issues and not all practices yeah. are in a position where they can have somebody dedicated to just the phones uninterrupted, like in a private room. So that's something to consider as well. Yeah. Can we go ahead and play the last call here. Yeah, let's do that. Thank you for calling. How can I help you? Hi, uh, my name is Emily. I was wondering how much liposuction is. Um, unfortunately, I don't have pricing for that. I can schedule you a complimentary consultation. They'll be able to give you more information on the procedure as well as pricing. Oh, okay. So you can't really give like a roundabout or anything? No, ma'am. I don't have that. No, I don't have pricing. Okay. And <laughs> is it like a one-time surgery or do I need multiple visits? Um, so we don't see that it's going to be just a one-time visit I mean, with age and um, eating habits. If you would like like a section in the future, it's, um, it is, um, so sorry, it is, you would come back. Wow. It's not a one time and done, but it is a one time for the year. Okay. What was your name? Jeanette. Okay, Jeanette, thanks. I'll call back. Dang. This is a real call. 
Yeah. These honestly were just random. I picked four different practices that we've done mystery shops for because I mean, it's all over the place, but every time we do these assessments, there's always some kind of opportunity for improvement. Right. So well, yeah. in this case, you know, my thought is these poor staff members just need to be trained better. I always am surprised how physicians overlook that component. Uh, I've created this practice manager activity planner for my academy so they can actually schedule internal trainings, right? You're always like waiting for a rep to bring you lunch. Now things are totally changed, but you almost have to commit on the calendar. Like I'm going to take you guys through a training about what it is to have liposuction with me. What Mm -hmm. is the process? What happens? What can the patient expect? You know, that's kind of the beauty too of of staff members who actually get treatments done because they've had them done themselves and then they can talk to that. Be more relatable for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, tell me your thoughts on this. Well, I'm glad we played that call because that's the white elephant in the room of like pricing. So you have practices with different perspectives where for OptiCall, we encourage practices to have their price scripting in place because it's really important that everybody's singing from the same sheet of music. So whether I call and speak to Kaylee or Dylan, that we're going to say the same thing. So unfortunately, like with this practice, they're getting instructions that they're not supposed to be sharing price. So what I try to share with our customers is like, just want you to have the right expectations. If you're not sharing price over the phone, uh, I mean, understand that that's not the most important thing, but you only have a limited window to be able to build trust and rapport, like 30 seconds. So if they feel like you're hiding something from them, right. I'm going to be inclined because it feels like you're just getting, you're in a setup or something like just so you can get there to find out that it's a lot more than what you're wanting to pay. Totally. Well, but don't you have to budget? I think this is something that has changed in the last probably few years, honestly, like where it's become more of a standard of practice to divulge at least a price range, right? Yeah. Because look, and it's lipo, you can get lipo for a lot of different prices, right? Mm-hmm. So it's almost like, okay, well, using it as an opportunity to say, here, it depends, first of all, the area. Like that was a simple question that was in my mind missed right away. Like, oh, tell me a little bit about what are your concerns? What are you looking, you know, what are you looking to accomplish? What are your goals? Like Mm -hmm. number one, and then shut up and let them talk, you know, so you understand more about whether lipo is even the right option for them or not, number Mm -hmm. one. But then breaking down the price in terms of, you know, this is, you can expect to spend something in the range of blah, 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 blah. Like, you know, even if it's like five to 10,000, if it's stupid range, but Uh it's like, more of that, right, to the bigger picture of establishing rapport and credentialing yourself as having knowledge and command over, you know, the procedure that they're asking about because your doctor's the expert, right? So mm-hmm. you should know that. Yeah. So I just think it's changed lately as of the last few years because there's with real self and I mean, you can Google and see what you should expect to pay for something. Um, well, some of our most successful clients actually have their pricing listed on the website. But they're also at a point where yeah. they can do that. They can disqualify. So right, because they're like, don't waste my time if you're not going to pay. And yeah. how aggressive you want to be on getting people in and how aggressive you want to be on pricing. So it's important to create the experience because I don't think people necessarily want the cheapest. I yeah. think they just want to know that they've called the right place. So by having a process in place to where you deliver consistently every time, you should be able to stand out against your competition. So. Yeah. We encourage practices to do their own assessments to hear what they sound like. We also encourage practices to call their competition. So you kind of have an idea of Agreed. what you're up against and there might be some good takeaways, things that they're doing well. Yeah. You well, know, actually, it's it's really helpful to listen to the four different calls because even let's say if I feel like I have a good command over the process for which I answer phones and book patients and I feel like that, you know, everything's kind of kosher, you mm-hmm. can kind of listen to that and learn about something you could do better or that you could make sure you don't do in the future, right? Like you're, it's just a learning opportunity. Yeah. I actually have, I don't play a few calls here, but I have an opti call call that's scubbed because okay. I was going to talk about our process. It's, it's a little bit longer. Do you want to hear yeah, that? I think we're good. We have a few minutes. So let's, the, because probably the people want to get this at 30 minutes, call, right? What's that? Right. Like now what is a good call? So this yeah. is like, okay. You want right. to hear? It? Yeah. Okay. Let's hear. For calling. So, Tony, how can I help you? Oh, hi there. Um, I was calling to see if I could get a, a consultation. Um, 
for some, I guess, cool sculpting, whatever you guys call it. Cool sculpting. Perfect, ma'am. You'd be a new patient of ours. That's right. Yeah, my friend April gave me Brittany's number. I don't know. But all right. Wonderful. Sounds like the main line. Sure, absolutely. No problem at all. Let's go ahead and jot down April's last name. We'll keep her as your referral. You know what? I don't know April's last name. Oh, we have cocktails together. <laughs> but I will find out by the time I come in. Okay. That's fine. I'm going to be here tonight. Okay, no problem. Let's go ahead and start with your first and last name, please. Rosemary. This is one word. Last name. All right, perfect. And this a good phone number to keep in your chart. My cell phone. It's very good. Okay. Yes. So I'm almost afraid this might be too long. It's about a five minute phone call. Okay. Uh, so, did you want to cut this off after 30 minutes, or? No, we're okay. Oh, you okay? Okay, we can keep playing. Yes, yes ma'am. That's right. All right, perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and load the calendar here. Um, now, you will be with us for about 30 minutes. Of course, this first consult is completely free of charge, okay? Great. Yes, we're going to give you a chance to sit down with our cool sculpting expert. Uh, we're going to have a, an assessment, 360-degree assessment, just so you can uh, ask any questions, of course. Are you thinking about having the treatment the same day? Oh, uh, maybe. Okay. It's nothing that you have to decide now, but I just wanted to give you a heads up. Uh, normally, we can squeeze the treatment right in after the consult, and then you'd be with us for a total of two hours, okay? Okay. All right, and of course, if you schedule this month, you receive a hundred dollar credit towards that treatment. I'll go ahead and pull up the calendar here. All right, ma'am. May I also have your date of birth, Rosemary? Yes. So I think we can skip a lot of the rest of it. Kind of gets into the coordination of the scheduling. You know. But the big takeaways are like having a process in place. Most practices don't have processes in place. So when I show them our process, we have our own phone scripting software like how we ask if it's their first time calling us, ask for a name and a number, they tell us they always do that. But that's why we like to start with the recorded lead conversion assessment to show them that, that that's not necessarily the case. Right. Because whoever the phones, there could be a lot of uh, opportunities that they're missing out on that they don't even know if they're going to voicemail or if there's no record of that lead. Well, exactly. So there's a question. What about having the receptionist place the caller on hold while she gets educated gets the well-educated RN or staff member to answer the caller's question. That's reasonable, as long as it's the process that's in place. That The only challenge with that is what happens when the coordinator or RN is with a patient that they can't necessarily drop. So I guess you're going to do the best with what you have to offer. So right. we encourage practices to kind of have their A-team. And we actually encourage, I don't know if you have a different opinion on this, but we encourage practices to have a two-step recording on their phone calls. And I know a lot of owners like that, like personalized touch, but in terms of growing a scalable business, something what is like- that? What's a two-step recording? Something like, thank you for calling Jones Aesthetics. If you're a first-time caller interested in one of our procedures or scheduling consultation, press two. Yeah. And if you're an existing patient or all the calls, press one, because you don't want just anybody within your practice handling those calls. And the I've first seen time so many call. times, I mean, you could be on the job for like two days and you're already fielding calls and you're like a deer in headlights. So when well, that system is set up, because I actually have a client who has this set up and we've had this conversation before, what is the notification that they usually get? Does it show up like on the phone, first time caller? No, it's just routed to a specific work group. So depending on their phone system, um, we probably encourage you to have like trained coordinators or RNs that have been through the scripts, know what they can and cannot share. Yeah. Whereas if somebody just calls and asks about pricing and you say it's $13 a unit for Botox, you're not maximizing those opportunities as opposed yeah. to, well, oh, I can definitely help you with that. Is this your first time contacting us? Great. Right. I get your name. Yeah. I would Botox totally before. recommend like my answer to that question. I would want to know who are the players you have on your team? Like where can we get that first person as strong as possible there's really you 
break it down. And maybe that's part of your progression, right? Where it's like, there's the information gathering of just capturing that lead right off the bat. Like, thanks so much for calling. Who am I speaking with? You know, have you called us before? Just in case we get disconnected, can you give me your number real quick? Blah, blah, blah. Like, tell me about your goals. Like there's that kind of information process. Then there's the part of really gathering, connecting, right? Connecting with the patient, building that trust and rapport, credentialing the practice. And then there's that part where it's like, okay, not a close, but it's a, what is the next step? Advancing that call, right? To like actual bringing that patient in the door, getting them booked. And I think maybe that's the part where it's, you know, it sounds like you have some more questions, some more clinical questions. And you know what? I'm so excited to talk to you. And I think what would be the best, because we really want to make sure that you have the best experience possible with us. Let me transfer you over to our blah, 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 to answer those questions because she does this all day long, every day, and she'll be able to answer, you know, with her eyes closed. Something like that, that was an awful articulation. (laughs) You know what I mean? Something to that effect where like maybe that handoff is a part of kind of that next process where you could get the person who answers the phone quickly up to speed on how to handle the first steps, right? Mm -hmm. If nothing else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you you could, if they're going to be handling the calls, teach them this process. So the introduction, like we said, just building the rapport, finding out how they heard about you, exploration. We don't want to go into a full consultation. We just want to ask some broad-based questions. So like it was liposuction, like what areas are you interested in having treated? And maybe a question like, have you ever been in to see if you're a candidate procedure? Just to see where they're at in the process. The education is actually painting the picture of the consultation. Mm -hmm. So don't just mention it. Actually talk to them about what happens when they're there. Is there a cost associated with it? How long are they going to be there? What to wear. They if they get to meet with the surgeon, you might want to validate that or if you want to name yeah, it. And even something, Dylan, that I think is really like special is describing what the parking situation is going to be like. Or like when you come in the building, the elevator is right to the left. Don't walk to the stairs because it's going to take you in a big loop around. Like maybe helping that patient kind of visualize what it's going to be like coming to the actual facility. Because yeah. you know how we just kind of want to know what to expect. It like eliminates that little bit of fear that we have. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. We do very parking lot. I think we bring that up like in the closing piece, like once they're committed. Other expectations might be like before and after pictures, like if okay. that's part of the process. Yeah. Uh, the idea is just under promise and over deliver. So don't just mention the consultation, talk about what happens. And really, if you follow those three steps, you're going to be standing out against your competition. Then at that wow. point, you've kind of built up to the point of what I call the fork in the road of actually asking for the appointment. So you can take an assumptive approach, but you kind of need to pause and make and see if they're ready to move forward or not. Right. And if they're not ready. You guys put the script in place. So it's almost a prompt for them to say, okay, now is the moment that you need to stop chitty chatting and get this deal done. Right. It's like, let's go. Well, they're either going to move forward or they're not. So our number one goal is to get them to the next step, which is to get a consultation, maybe a virtual consultation. And if they're not ready for that, then we offer information. And this is another great takeaway for practices on the presentation today. I'd say 98% of practices have no call to action if somebody's not ready to book. Yeah. So the idea is like they reached out to you. They're genuinely interested Mm -hmm. unless they're like mystery shopping or strictly concerned about price, most people that are genuinely interested will be receptive to that. So it gives you an opportunity to get the rest of the demographic information that wasn't appropriate to get up front. So then you can ask them for an email address. Then you can ask them for their physical address because you're going to send them some correspondence. Right. So ideally, well, you have to- And something oh, I'm going to be going into detail training on in our upcoming reinvention boot camp on June 22nd. And I'll give you guys all more information about that too. But is talking about now in this kind of, post-COVID area, we're on the fringe, right? And everybody knows about Zoom and communication virtually and telecommunication and virtual consultations. Like that's going to be a standard of care. But what practices need to be doing to differentiate themselves is building really an inspired infrastructure or a platform for themselves where they can be constantly educating and present. And Mm -hmm. I think that should be a part of the sales process on the phone call regardless. Even if it's simple as, do you know we go, Dr. Smith goes live on Instagram every Tuesday. Are you on our mailing list so we can send you the link to make sure you get all of those freebies or this education or that or that? Like there's always something going on, not just like that. Book now, you know, you get a discount, but like, do you know that we have this community where you can come and be a part of learning and, you know, growing with us? You're putting them in your funnel mm-hmm. where they're, you're capturing that patient. 
right? Than just the procedure. Yeah. And that's the idea, the funnel or nurturing. So not everybody's ready to book. So you kind of have to be able to cater to people at different stages of the what right. we call the educational spectrum. Totally. And it doesn't mean that they never will. And not, you know, or you're evil or you didn't answer the phone correctly. Mm-hmm. Right. So, okay. So Dylan, tell us now about how Optical can help and what this really cool offer that you have for the tribe folks that are listening today. And obviously on the replays, hashtag replay. Yeah. yeah. Well, the offer for any of the members of the group is the free lead conversion assessment. So it's kind of a loss leader for us where we'll place five calls over two to three weeks just to get a barometer on what the experience is like, just sample. And now we're also doing web lead response. So we can place five contact forms to their website. We use the different forms there. Okay, hold on. You guys, are you hearing this? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to like bombard Optical here, but I'm dead serious. So what he's saying is that he's willing to make five basically secret shopper calls at no charge, lead conversion calls, assessing how your practice is currently doing with finessing the seven figure phone call. Okay. Please take advantage of that. So he's going to call you. Well, maybe not Dylan. Dylan's team is going to call you five calls over the course of two to three weeks randomly. Okay. And then also capture web lead response, which means, you know, those little people that are like, I'm interested in your contact form on your website on Friday afternoon at three and your team's like checked out at the beach. What's happening to those? Okay. So please take advantage. Okay, Dylan, (laughs) I'm dead serious. This is so awesome. So how do they book that? We have a form on our website. Okay. I can send that over to you. Anybody that's interested in the assessment, we can do phone calls and web conversions. Okay. And what makes them qualified for this offer? That they're affiliated with Kaylee. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you heard it. You heard it. We try. I guess it's like the John Smith theory in terms of what I know about this business. That's how I'd want somebody to approach me. Uh, Like we we have to identify where the opportunities are and we're not looking to stump their counselors. We're not going to, we don't like it when people do that to us, start asking totally. like, how often you calibrate your laser and questions that consumers don't really ask. <laughs> um, so once we can get an idea of what the, the process is like, we can share our approach. We've managed over 2 million leads to be able to deliver consistently. It's kind of like the Starbucks. You, know, you want to have processes in place. right? And then we can crunch some numbers to see if any of our services might make sense for them. We have right. like, overflow, extended hours of coverage to see if it makes sense. But we want to make sure they're educated because we want a long-term relationship because it has to be win-win for everybody. So the numbers have to make sense. It should be a good return on investment for the practice, a better patient experience, and hopefully saves time for the staff. So what Optical does basically, guys, is they have different packages, but they can basically prepare a script. They'll go into a full analysis of what you really want that process to look like for your practice. And they prepare these prompts and the system that's in your, so when your receptionist answers the phone, they're automatically going in and following these touch points points, these benchmarks with the patient to take them through that progression process that we talked about. And maybe that's something you need, something you don't. They can also handle after hours when your practice is shut down, because I could not believe the stat on that same webinar we were on. One of the consultants, the business consultants said that they had called 25 of their clients on a Friday. She called like 20, like her, all her clients and only 15 of them actually answered by Monday or by Tuesday or something like that, right? Wasn't it Tuesday or Wednesday? I'm trying to remember the stuff. Yeah, that sounds right. I was baffled. I thought, oh my gosh, we need to do that for our clients too. Like just randomly, you know, like whip you guys into gear. Because I do think that when a patient is ready, they're probably calling, they have three practices in mind. They've already done their homework. They've done their research and they're calling to be like, okay, who's going to get me booked? You know what I mean? Like you're waiting for that. And we, when we're in the mood, like I know when I'm ready, I want something. I don't want to sit and wait for someone to call me back. I'm going to call the next place. And Mm -hmm. then if they answer and they book me, then I'm good. I have that need solved, right? Unless they're totally awful and I don't connect with a doctor, that's probably the practice I'm going to go with, right? Google calls it a micro moment, which is that critical moment of truth when somebody's emotionally failed to pick up the phone. So like if they call you on a Friday... Maybe like it, it could have taken courage to reach out to, to talk about changing totally. their look and 
who knows what happens over the weekend. Yeah. And I think too, like in those contact forms, if you don't have a live chat or something that you're like literally on top of it, Mm -hmm. you know, so anyway, I think it's great. I love what you guys are doing, Dylan. And I don't, I just think that there's so much value in just going through the process of learning what your practice is doing. And worst case, you are going to leave with some touch points or some points of going back to educate your team and setting up that training. I think that the more established and the busier your practice gets, the more important these things are. If you think you have it handled, that's where those little things slip through the cracks and those cogs develop in that wheel of that system of sales and marketing where you don't realize it. So I just am so thankful that you're giving that offer to everybody. And I hope that you all who are here take advantage of it. And yeah, that's that. So thanks for being here today. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. We appreciate it. And let me know if I can help with anything. Okay. Will do. All right, tribe. Thank you guys. I will, if you have, if you're watching the replay and you have questions, go ahead and type them in there and my team will make sure that they get answered. And then we'll go ahead and provide the direct information of how you can contact Dylan, get more information from them and, or definitely schedule those conversion assessments for your practice. And yeah, thank you guys for being here today. That was wonderful. Thanks, Dylan. Thanks, Kaylee. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining me for this episode of The Fierce Factor. If you enjoyed the show, please make sure you subscribe so you can automatically get new shows every week. I'd also love it if you left us a review. And come join the conversation online. If you're an aesthetic industry owner, operator, or leader, please join my free Facebook group, The Tribe of Fierce Aesthetic Leaders a community of ambitious, purpose-driven professionals who collaborate and share best practices for growth in business and life. I'm honored you tuned in.